We need to constantly remind ourselves that healing was and still is a major part of Jesus' ministry. Look at this verse. And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease amongst the people. His ministry was that of teaching, then preaching, followed by healing. It's interesting to note that healing came after teaching, as it was necessary to first build up the people's faith to receive. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans 10, 17. When he began his ministry, Jesus came declaring that he would heal people in every way. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. He began by declaring that the Spirit of God was upon him. It's important for people to believe in the vessel that has been sent from God. Even though Jesus was God in the flesh, the power was negated through unbelief in his hometown. They didn't believe in the vessel, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus went about healing all that were oppressed by the devil. We learn from this verse that Jesus is good and loves to heal people. We also learn that sickness is from the devil. God doesn't put sickness on us. If this was so, then Jesus was undoing all of God's work by healing people. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Notice that it was the devil that had bound this woman for eighteen years, not God. You might say this is all very well, but Jesus is now dead, and his healings are all over. It was all just for back then, to show that he was God. Jesus trained up his apostles to carry on the work that he did, as we see in Luke 9, 1 to 6. They were sent out on healing missions, Luke 10, 1 and 9, and came back rejoicing at the wonderful results. You might say that these disciples are all dead now, and the ministry of healing was gone with them, and that it's not for today. But the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus is still the same. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13.8 All those who belong to Jesus, even today, have been given the power to be like him and to minister like him. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Go into the entire world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Healing is for all those who believe, and is one of the signs that follow all believers. Some will say that this verse is not found in the early manuscripts, and could just be a man-made addition. What about the rest of the New Testament then? With verses like John 14.12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believes on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. We shall do the works that Jesus did as we believe. Matthew 16.20 says that signs will follow the word of God. If you want signs, then you need to digest and preach the word of God. It stands the reason that if you don't believe and preach healing, then people won't be healed. Healing was a major part of Jesus' ministry. When people saw the healings that he did, then they believed. He didn't just preach and stop there. He used the gifts of the Spirit as well. This anointing was passed on to the apostles and then the 70 disciples and then to all those who believe, even today. Jesus had compassion back then and still has compassion today. He is still the same. I have to add that there are times when some sicknesses lead to death. And there are also some Christians who remain crippled. Not all Christians are free from wearing glasses either, yet this is not a sign of unbelief. Paul had some sort of thorn in the flesh and asked God to deliver him, but the thorn remained, yet he still went on doing miracles and healing the sick. He had to trust in God's strength and not his own, yet he didn't let this stop him from believing. I can't explain why some things happen, 
but I don't let this stop me from believing what I've already stated earlier, Jesus heals today. Remember too that some healings can come after a long time of believing, and one shouldn't allow unbelief to shortchange you. Look at Abraham in his trial of faith, for instance. We are to preach healing as part of Jesus' ministry, and just because it doesn't happen sometimes doesn't mean we should stop believing. People aren't saved every time we preach, but that doesn't mean we should stop preaching that salvation is for today. And neither should we with healing. 